head of the body. Who's the head of the body? What is the body? Next two words tell us. The church. He is the head of the body, the church. So the body is the church. Who's the head of the body? We got to make sure. Let's get it again. So there's the church. Who's the body? But who's the head of the body, the church? Jesus. It is not you. It's not you, pastor. It's not me, pastor. I'm not the head of the body. I'm part of the body. That's a revelation for some pastors. He is the head of the body, and the body is the church, and the church is me. Too many pastors are getting frustrated because they try to make themselves the head. And they try to build a church around themselves. And it's no place to be. We're not called to be the head. We're called to be the part of the body. It says, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. What's the word preeminence means? First in rank, influence, position, high prominence above all others. In all things, who has the preeminence? Jesus. In all things, who is superior, who is first in rank and influence and position, high prominence above all others? Jesus. Everything we do, pastors, has to be to point to Jesus being the preeminent one. It's telling your people, it's not me, it's Jesus. It's telling your people, it's not this, it's Jesus. Everything is pointing to him. If you'll keep pointing to him, then people will want to serve him. If they point to you, if you point to you, then they're looking at you as a human being like, I don't think I want to do that. Well, don't look to me. Look to Jesus. He's a preeminent one. And I think this is getting lost in church growth culture where we're so focused on growing the church and we're the head of that church. So therefore, if the church grows, we are good. So we go to conferences, we go to places, go to other pastors. The first thing we talk about, hey, what you doing? How, how's it going? How, what size is your church? What are we doing? We're, we're checking the pulse. We're comparing ourselves to see where we rank. I know you guys, we're talking about other pastors, not pastors at this conference. We're talking about other pastors. Then when you talk to a person like that, you say, oh, well, church, we're about 150. Oh, all of a sudden you feel better about yourself because your church is 250. What? What's wrong? This type of mentality will not reach the world in the days of head. We've got to kill it. We've got to kill comparison. We've got to kill uh, affirmation based on attendance and build affirmation based on presence. God spoke to me and he said, Chad, I never called you to grow a church. I called you to love me. So over the last two years, I've gone through a process of realigning my focus, realigning my purpose that I've told my church. I said, I don't care. Take this the right way. I said, I don't care if any of you come. I care if one comes. And if he comes, I'm going to go home a happy man. But if you guys don't come, that's up to you. I've come for him. We're going to gather around him. We're going to focus on him. We're going to focus on encountering his presence. And when he comes, he's going to do things that none of us can do. I just got two text messages this morning about uh, a woman that was healed of COPD in our worship service. She had COVID lung and uh, was not doing well and said that she went home after church. She'd been on oxygen 24 hours a day. Uh, she was, but she went home and she walked four blocks without any issues, went to, uh, she's out, I'm sure, shopping with no oxygen machine for the last 48 hours and is praising Jesus. Another text message from an individual who had sensory issues, ADHD, they were going to put him on medication, but we had a baptism service and, and Sunday morning and he, he was baptized, we, get, we baptized him, he went home and his mom said, something has changed, all these things that used to trigger him. Now all of a sudden he's different, he's calm, it's not bothering him anymore. What's happened? I didn't do any of that. The presence did that. I didn't pray for the lady with COPD. God touched her during worship. If you create a place for his presence, things will happen. He is before all things. So you're like, wait a minute, isn't this about assimilation? Yes, it is. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm, I'm just saying what we're assimilating them unto has to be defined clearly first. 
if I'm assimilating them unto the production team, I've missed the mark. If I'm assimilating them to children's ministry, I've missed the mark. And that's not to say none of those things are important. They are all very important. But your and my assignment is to go, therefore, into all the world and make ushers. Go, therefore, in all the world, preach the gospel, and make production team members. Never says that. We've written that into our church bylaws. That our role is to make sure, are they, oh, John's here, is he on a team? Oh, he's serving on a team, praise the Lord, let's move on. I'm assuming he'll come now and be a part of the team. But who is John becoming? Who is Jane becoming? Ephesians chapter four, I hesitated even to talk about this because Dr. Randy talked about it last night and we started reading these scriptures. I'm like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> verse, verse 11 and he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints. What's our job? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry, the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Assimilation is about equipping saints and not equipping our teams. Assimilation process should not be based on equipping a team to accomplish a task on a Sunday. Assimilation should be equipping saints for the work of ministry. What is that? Fill in the blank. Whatever Jesus tells them to do. It is a relationship-based work, not a task-based work. We're not equipping them to do, we're equipping them to become. So different. If I equip them to look at the checklist that I have on the camera that Sunday, and that's all I do, I'm robbing them of the work of the ministry. When they go to Walmart and they see someone in need, they're going to look for a checklist. But if we teach them to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as they're looking at the checklist, then they don't miss anything on the camera and they hear the voice of the Lord and they can go do something outside of that. Does that make sense? Equipping them for the work of the ministry, not just for the work of our church service. Assimilation has to be bigger than getting something done for us. <laughs> Because as a pastor, it can just be about, hey, I got all my teams making my service go, check. But where are those people in their growth and their relationship with the preeminent one? I don't know, but they can sure run a good camera. Yeah, but they're smoking weed after service. I get, we get really real in Southern Illinois, so if I, if I get too I mean, we got, we got all kinds of issues where our, our goal is too short. We need to bring them unto him and let him do a work in their heart and not just them getting on a team and being satisfied, getting on a team and serving, that's great. But we gotta have more than that. All right, let me go on. I wanna get to the nuts and bolts of this. So we're equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. Remember, who's the head? Jesus, edifying the building up of the body of Christ. The saints are supposed to edify the body of Christ, not the pastor, not the preacher alone, but it's the body is being edified, by, or the, the body is edifying the body of Christ, equipping the saints for the edifying of the body of Christ. The saints are doing it. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of faith, till we all come to what? The unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to to a, look what it's saying here, to a perfect man or woman, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What are we doing? What are we doing in assimilation to equip the saints for the work of the ministry till we all come to the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect or complete or mature man or woman, to the measure, what's the measurement of their complete and maturity? The measure is the stature of Christ. So are we teaching them to do or are we teaching them to become? In your assimilation process, ever, I don't, you've got all kinds of system. You can do a number of things. We can teach you to do this. You can do, uh, we've, we've got a growth track. Then now, thanks to Pastor Matt, we're starting a, uh, before that. Okay, so we've got a fresh start class. 
It's a one-week class. I'm going to give you some practical things. Fresh start class. Then we got a growth track. Then we're going to have a foundational class. It's going to be several weeks. And then, then we're going to have a Jesus book material, uh, discipleship based on Michael Koulianos' book. And then, then after that, we're going to have a spiritual gifts training that goes several weeks. And then after that, we're going to, if they, people still want to go further, we've got Kaneo ministry training that people can go to. We're going to help them sign up for that. And then after that, if they still want to go for, further, I'm going to point them to Global Awakening Theological Seminary so you can go to you get a doctorate. We want all kinds of systems for them to walk through. But it's not those systems that's important. It's what they're unto that's important. And if I don't care about them as individuals and where they are on the progression line, and I just care about their fanny sitting in my congregation, I haven't got the heart of Christ. It's not just about are they coming, it's who are they becoming I don't know, they're here every week, that's great, but what are they, who are they becoming? Are they, are they becoming to the fullness of the measure of Christ, or are they just coming to Sunday? I don't care. I told the church, I said, listen, <laughs> I will preach us down to 100 faithful sold-out people, and we will get more accomplished with 100 sold-out people than we will with 1,000 with a bunch of attenders. I want people that want to pray, get connected to the heart of Jesus, and be led by him. Let's, time, i got to go forth. So stay focused. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every, with every wind of doctrine, but the tri- by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But here's a part, important. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things, grow up, in all things into where? Into him. What is our target? There you go. What's your target with your assimilation process for your people? Matt did a great job of talking about having measurables to know where people are on that progression. What is the ultimate target? It is to grow them up into him. If they are not growing into him, they are not growing up. They may be setting in our church for year after year, be a faithful server on a team, but they're not supposed to just grow unto a team. They're supposed to grow unto a person. So they're growing unto him. So what's our focal point? Making all my assimilation process is about becoming someone who looks like Jesus. If it's behind a camera, if it's in children's ministry, if it's in ministry team or wherever, that's wonderful. But my assimilation process has to be a target of you unto him. Not you unto us or being a part of us. No, it's you unto him. Where are you on that progression?